Welcome to lesson number two of the Enjoy Life Forever brochure. Now, in order to follow along on this lesson, as it might sound strange to you that you're not seeing anything on this video. The reason why is that you have to follow along on the study using the JW Library app. So in order to get this app on your device, you need to go to Google Play and look up JW Library. And so if you have an Android device, that's the web uh, site that you would go to, the store, Google Play. If you have an Apple device, then you would go to the Apple Store. And you would type in the search JW Library. So once you have that app, then you can uh, put onto that app the, uh, the lesson brochure that we're studying in. Now, if you are not certain about how to get to where you need to get to, in the video description below, the link below will take you exactly to where you need to go. Google Play or Apple Store. And the link will also show you a video uh, tutorial of how you can get this study brochure up on your JW library where you can follow along. And once you can put that on your device, when we get to video, Bible-based videos that you'll be able to check out, you can watch those and you can follow along in the lesson. Okay, so here we go. Lesson number two. The Bible gives hope. People around the world deals with problems that cause them to feel sadness, anxiety, and even pain. Have you ever faced a situation that made you feel those things? Perhaps you're suffering because of an illness or because someone you loved has died. You may ask yourself, will life ever get better? The Bible provides a reassuring answer to that question. Point number one, how does the Bible give hope? The Bible not only explains why the world is filled with problems, but also shares the good news that these problems are temporary and will soon be gone. The Bible's promise can give you a future and a hope. Read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 and 12. And it reads, For I well know the thoughts that I am thinking toward you, declares Jehovah, thoughts of peace and not of calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Continue with the paragraph. These promises help us to cope with our present problems, to have a positive attitude and to find lasting happiness. Question on point one. How does the Bible give hope? The promise of hope was given by God's own word concerning you. For he is saying in that verse that my thoughts of thinking toward you is of peace and not of calamity to give you a future and a hope. This is what Jehovah God is thinking toward every person. That is the hope that we can have and indeed the hope that is being extended to you. Point two, what kind of future does the Bible describe? The Bible describes a future time when death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be anymore. Read Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. And so we touch on that scripture and it brings out the scripture on the side column and it reads, and he will wipe out every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Neither will mourning nor outcry nor pain be anymore. The former things have passed away. Continuing in the reading. The problems that can make life seems hopeless today, such as poverty, injustice, sickness, 
and death will no longer exist. The Bible promises that humans will be able to enjoy life forever and a paradise on earth. The question on point two, what kind of future does the Bible describe? It describes a future where death will be no more. Mourning nor pain will be any more. Those things is described in verse four as having passed away. They are referred to as the former things. So things that won't be happening anymore, but it is in the past. The former things have passed away. Point three, how can you build your trust and the hope the Bible gives? Many people hope for good things to happen, but they cannot be sure that their hopes will ever be fulfilled. What the Bible promises is different. We can build up our trust and what it says by carefully examining the scriptures. As cited in Acts chapter 17, verse 11. As you study the Bible, you will be able to decide for yourself whether you can believe what it says about the future. The scripture cited at Acts chapter 17, 11 says, Now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, for they accepted the word with the greatest eagerness of mind, carefully examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. So this Bible counts written about the Apostle Paul's uh, dealings with people in Baroe. You see, because when Paul brought the word about the Christ, the good news to them, they checked the scriptures about the prophecy of the Christ, how Jesus fulfilled those prophecies, identifying him as the Messiah. They checked the scriptures themselves to make sure that it was true. They didn't necessarily trust what Paul said. Now, was Paul to be offended? No. He was encouraging Indeed, that they searched the scriptures to see that whether the things being told about the good news was true and that it was based upon the scriptures. So how can you build up your trust and the hope the Bible gives? By carefully examining the scriptures. Dig deeper. Examine some of the conditions that the Bible promises for the future. See how the hope the Bible gives is helping people today. So we can see the artist's rendition of the hope that we can look forward to in the coming near future when the kingdom is fulfilled upon the earth. Sickness and death done away with. A man with a wheelbarrow who is now in his youth and in good health. And you can see the opposing picture in the background where he was advanced in age and physically infirmed. We see a young boy playing with perhaps his sister in good health, who has the uh, photo in the background, pretty much shows him in poverty. We see a woman who is sitting in depression. She is now positive with hope vibrant with full physical and mental health. Point four, the Bible offers the hope of everlasting life in perfect conditions. Look at the following list of promises found in the Bible. Which ones especially appeals to you and why? Read the scriptures cited next to those promises and consider these questions. So in the color boxes below, the wordings introduced, picture living in a world where, and then on the left side of the boxes, we read where no one will feel pain, weaken with age, or have to die. Scripture cited is Isaiah 25 verse eight. The next one below, 
when you continue that statement, no one will get sick or live with a disability. Isaiah 33, 24. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 and 6. No one will experience injustice. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16 and 17. No one will suffer as a result of war. Psalm 46, verse 9. No one will be plagued by troubling thoughts or memories. Isaiah 65, verse 17. So as we read each one, you can pause this, this video and you can tap on those scriptures and read them. Going over to the second column, everyone will see dead loved ones resurrected, brought back to life on earth. John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Everyone will enjoy good health and youthful energy. Job chapter 33, verse 25. Everyone will have plenty to eat, a comfortable home, and satisfying work. Psalms chapter 72, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 21 and 22. Everyone will experience complete peace. Psalm chapter 37, verse 11. Everyone will live forever in ideal conditions. Psalm 37, verse 29. And so once again, each of these uh, scriptures that we cite, you, you can stop the video and you can tap that and your column in the JW library will show the scriptures that you can you can read. Okay, so here down below, so no, let's go back up. After we read those two columns of scriptures, there's a bullet point that says, do you feel that these scriptures give hope? Could they give hope to your family and friends? So if you feel the hope from those scriptures that you read, does it give you hope? Could you share those with those of your friends and family so that they can feel that hope too? So now below, you have like a, a picture box here. And it's, it's like a picture slide, really. So you can tap on the arrows to move to each of those pictures that we saw above that we highlighted. Point number five. The Bible's hope can make a difference. Many people are discouraged or even angered by the problems they see around them. Some fight to try to change things for the better. See how the Bible's promise that things will get better helps people now. Play the video and then discuss the questions that follow. So at this point, you stop this video you pause it and then go ahead and play the video. And then after you play the video, we're going to come back and we are going to discuss the two bullet point questions below these pictures that you see below the, the, uh, the video. Okay. The video is entitled, I wanted to fight injustice. It's four minutes and seven seconds long. So go ahead, check that video out. And then after that, we're going to come back to these bullet point questions. Okay, so now if you restarted this video, you saw a video about a woman's experience. Now in the video, what injustice troubled Rafika? Give you a little time to think about that. So she saw injustice. She couldn't understand why black folks could not be equally treated with white folks. And for that matter, her desire was for all nationalities of persons to be able to get along and to be happy with each other. She wasn't seeing that. The second bullet, 
although the injustice that she saw did not go away, how did the Bible help her? So there's uh, an account where she was looking at the King James Version. And so she, she had trouble understanding it. What was the problem? Well, you know, she was reading these and thys. So it wasn't necessarily the language, the current language of the day and how people speak English. So she saw the New World's Translation Bible which was written in the everyday English language that people speak. And she finally understood what she was reading. The hope that the Bible offers for the future can help us to battle discouragement and cope with our problems successfully. Read Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22 and Romans chapter 12, verse 12, and then discuss these questions. So if you look at the paragraph, tap on Proverbs 17, 22. And it reads, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit saps one's strength. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in the hope, endure under tribulation, persevere in prayer. So now the bullet point question. Do you think that the message of hope found in the Bible could make a difference in your life now? Why? Do you think that the message of hope found in the Bible could make a difference in your life now? And why? The gray box reads, some people say, the Bible's promises for the future are too good to be true. The bullet point question, why do you think that it is important to examine the evidence? The summary, the Bible gives us hope and helps us to cope with challenges by promising a future filled with happiness. Review, why do people need hope? Because all of us are experiencing sickness, death, injustice, depression, and threats of war that could end all life with nuclear weapons. And the second bullet point question, what does the Bible say about the future? We read all the wonderful hopes of God's kingdom, eradicating death, sickness, providing the resurrection of our loved ones who died, everyone living in peace. The third bullet point question, how can having a hope for the future help you now? So as we read in the series of the color boxes above, how life will be, those are the promises that the Bible gives us, that gives us a hope for the future. So unlike many people, who may not be educated about these scriptural hopes, we do not have to live in morbid fear of what the future will be. Okay, congratulations. You've now completed lesson two. You can go back and review everything that you've been over in this lesson. And for today, you want to mark lesson completed on this date. So you're gonna put the date into the box when you completed this lesson. Now there's a goal below in the gray box. The goal you wanna check off is to be more familiar with the Bible's promises by reading the verses listed in this lesson. And of course, if you wanna have another goal, you can write that down in the empty box uh, field right there. So now everything else below explore, where you see the picture of the flower there, all that below there is just supplemental information that you can look up in your own spare time. Okay? So, I hope you enjoyed lesson two. The next lesson, lesson number three, is entitled, 
Can you trust the Bible? This will be the final lesson in the Enjoy Life Forever brochure, which is just the introductory brochure that only contains three lessons. So if you want to continue on, you'll see more lessons posted that'll go beyond lesson three, to go to lesson four. And it keeps going. And I think it goes up to about 60 total lessons. By the time you're on your way halfway to the 60, you will certainly be manifesting that you are enjoying the study. And I enjoy being able to have this privilege to walk you through these lesson brochures. Well, I would definitely encourage that if you want a home visit, a personal visit to uh, study with Jehovah's Witnesses, then click the link below in the detailed box of this video, which will take you directly to where you can apply to have someone, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, come to your home and continue studying with you. Now, the one-on-one -on -one is really nice. You can interact with that person. You can ask some additional questions that you won't be able to do with me on this walkthrough video. So that last lesson, lesson three in the introductory brochure is very important. Can you trust the Bible? And it's very important that you are able to trust the Bible because when the Bible is talking about a practical advice for daily living and when it's talking about the hope that is held out and what, and what the kingdom is going to do, when the Bible is telling us about all those things, if we cannot trust the Bible, then none of that matters. So that's why the third lesson is very important. Can you trust the Bible? Okay. So if we can't trust the Bible, then everything else that we've been talking about, discussing in God's word, the Bible doesn't mean a thing. Okay. So that's why lesson three is very, very important. So check that out. Okay. We'll catch you in lesson three. Take care.